This document was published in 2010. It's called Scenarios for the Future of Technology and International Development. This was put out by the Rockefeller Foundation. This first scenario is called Lockstep. <clears throat> in 2012, the pandemic that the world had been anticipating for years finally hit. Even the most pandemic prepared nations were quickly overwhelmed when the virus streaked around the world, infecting nearly 20% of the global population and killing 8 million in just seven months. The pandemic also had a deadly effect on economies. International mobility of both people and goods screeched to a halt, breaking global supply chains. Even locally, normally bustling shops and office buildings sat empty for months, devoid of both employees and customers. Even in developed countries, containment was a challenge. However, a few countries did fare better, China in particular. The Chinese government's quick imposition and enforcement of mandatory quarantine for all citizens, as well as its instant and near hermetic sealing off of its borders, saved millions of lives, stopping the spread of the virus far earlier than in other countries and enabling a swifter post-pandemic recovery. It's a plan, folks. It's all a plan. This is all according to plan. Highly intrusive real-time tracking of a largely compliant population. That was the key to the eventual lifting of the lockdown in Wuhan. China did a lot of things right. Some countries did respond very quickly and get their testing in place, and they avoided the incredible economic pain. This document continues from 2010, I remind you. China's government was not the only one that took extreme measures to protect its citizens from risk and exposure. During the pandemic, national leaders around the world flexed their authority and imposed airtight rules and restrictions from the mandatory wearing of face masks to body temperature checks at the entries to communal spaces like train stations and supermarkets. Even after the pandemic faded, this more authoritarian control and oversight of citizens and their activities stuck and even intensified. Citizens willingly gave up some of their sovereignty and their privacy to more paternal paternalistic states in exchange for greater safety and stability. Citizens were more tolerant and even eager for top-down direction and oversight. In developed countries, this heightened oversight took many forms, biometric IDs for all citizens, for example. In many developed countries, enforced cooperation with a suite of new regulations and agreements slowly but steadily restored both order and, more importantly, economic growth. Isn't that uncanny? Isn't this incredible that in 2010 they were predicting that this exact thing would happen. I mean, sure, you can go back to Event 201. Now let's talk about a little thing called Event 201. The John Hopkins Center for Health Security in partnership with the World Economic Forum and the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation hosted Event 201, a high-level pandemic exercise on October 18th, 2019 in New York, New York. On behalf of our center and our partners, the World Economic Forum and the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, the goal of the Event 201 exercise is to illustrate the potential consequences of a pandemic and the kinds of societal and economic challenges it would pose. They're running a simulation of what they think would happen and what their response to a pandemic outbreak would be. Again, this simulation that they're running happened in October of 2019 and was about the coronavirus. When they say caps in this video, they're talking about the coronavirus. They knew what the outbreak would be three months before it actually happened. Are they just that good at guessing? I'll leave it up to you to decide. CAPS is a serious respiratory disease. More than half of the recognized cases have required hospital care, creating a huge strain on healthcare systems. Some people only exhibit mild flu-like symptoms, not requiring treatment in a hospital. Alarmingly, those people are able to walk around and spread the virus, not realizing they are doing so. Global health experts have highlighted that dis and misinformation are wreaking havoc on the CAPS response. How can governments, international businesses, international organizations ensure that reliable information is getting to the public and prevent highly damaging and false information to the extent that's possible about the pandemic from spreading and causing deepening crisis around the world? Twitter and Facebook are reporting they've identified and deleted a disturbing number of accounts dedicated to spreading disinformation about the outbreak. To me, it is clear countries need to make strong efforts to manage both mis- and disinformation. This is a huge problem that's going to keep us from ending the pandemic and might even lead to the fall of governments. If the solution means controlling and reducing access to information, I think it's the right choice. Is anyone else feeling a little bit incredulous? It's just a rather odd coincidence, is it not? that you would know exactly which virus it was and exactly what you needed to do to prevent 
disinformation and misinformation. If you come out and say, hey, it looks like this was awful planned, what do you think they're going to do? They're going to come in and go, this is the type of disinformation we were talking about. This is the type of misinformation we need to protect against. This is all planned. They have the rollout planned out perfectly. And the hubris, the confidence that they have in their ability to control humanity, that they think that they can just do it completely openly. The issues you will be dealing with over the next hours uh, maybe tabletop exercises today, but they address real and critical threats which we at WHO take very seriously. I fully expect uh, that we will be confronted by a fast-moving, highly lethal pandemic of a respiratory pathogen. Many countries will be affected at the same time. This is particularly true with the respiratory pathogen, as they are often transmitted by asymptomatic persons. I think uh, an epidemic, either naturally caused or intentionally caused, is the most likely thing to cause, say, 10 million excess deaths. There is no question that there will be a surprise outbreak. Today, the greatest risk of global catastrophe doesn't look like this. Instead, it looks like this. If anything kills over 10 million people in the next few decades, it's most likely to be a highly infectious virus. You gave this, this chilling warning that the world was in danger at some point of a major pandemic. <laughs> people watching that talk now, you know, the hair stands up in the back of their neck. It is, it is exactly what we're living through. This is not a case of random events that's going on now. This is the culmination of a vast amount of time and preparation to reach this point. Everything was in place before they pressed the button on 2020.